Cassie was eventually instructed to use websites and escort services to find male sex workers to participate in the FOs. Diddy told Cassie to search for a large black on the website. Hey, Diddy needs to be locked the f up. You hear me? Real talk, man. I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen the story, heard the story. Cassie, she shot some nasty allegations towards Diddy, bro. Nasty, dog. And only one day later, it's all settled in court. What's that mean? Diddy did all of that, bro. All of it, bro. I don't, damn, bro. There's no way in hell you going to drag my name through the mud like this publicly and we going to settle this in court? Nah, we doing a whole Johnny Depp 2.0, bro. But you lying? We taking it to court. I'm gonna clear my fucking name, bro. With the sh that's in this complaint. Yeah, I, I saw the the summary of what she uh, accused Diddy of, bro. But reading the actual complaint that was filed for court, whew, man, like like the cat's already out the bag, bro. All it takes for somebody to deep dive into what's on the the complaint, and you can see how much of a monster Diddy is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, this fool need to be canceled. Don't nobody need to be su supporting this man in any form or fashion, bro. I'm, I'm going to read through some of this, and it's pretty graphic. And not pretty graphic. It's, it's extremely graphic. So, uh, viewer discretion advised. It says, Diddy graped Cassie in her home, and after, after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped Cassie, resulting in bruises, burst lip, black eyes, bleeding, uh, blew up a man's car after he learned Dude was romantically involved with Cassie. He forced Cassie to engage in sexual acts with male sex workers while he masturbated, recording it. Uh, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry exec whom he learned was nearby. Demanded Cassie to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he was. And introduced Cassie to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. Bro. So the complaint initially describes how everything came to be. Diddy's 37. Cassie's 19. It's Diddy. She's Cassie. He's the boss. She's trying to get on and shit. Um, he signs her to Bad Boy. 10 album contract or whatever. She just wants to keep it professional. She has a man, but Diddy wants her, so he goes after her and does everything within his power to do it. He's 20 years older than her. He's predatory as fuck, manipulative as fuck, right? Holds his power against her. If she don't do what he wants, then her opportunities will be taken away, and she's easily manipulated because it's fucking Diddy, bro. It's Diddy. So, like, he forced her to do drugs and shit. Uh, she had a man, right? But he just... He, he controlled everything, bro. Like, he, he controlled the network. He controlled her personal life, controlled her career life, bro. Like, he got to the point where her medical records were sent to him. You know what I mean? Like, he controlled every fucking avenue of her life, and she was fucking locked in for however long it was. They summarized how that came to be in the complaint. But eventually, uh, Diddy gets her, right? And that's when the, the nasty shit started going on. So, um... Yeah, from the beginning, from the start of the relationship, Diddy exerted his power and influence over Cassie. The dynamic was fueled by their nearly 20-year age difference, as well as their relative positions, Diddy being who he is, Puff Daddy back then, bro, and uh, Cassie, a 19-year-old girl trying to get on. Diddy paid for an apartment for Cassie, five minutes away from his crib. Diddy controlled every aspect of her life, every event she attended, from travel, makeup, clothing was paid for directly by Diddy and his companies. Compounding all encompassing intrusion to her life, Diddy secured his control over the young and impressionable Cassie by introducing her to dr a drug fuel lifestyle that kept her complacent and compliant. He, he introduced her to opiates 2008 and would often have pills and drugs out and open like candy upon uh, information and belief. Combs had been addicted to painkillers and, and took ecstasy all the time. Um... At first, Cassie was given prescriptions by Diddy, but then he would run out and he forced Cassie to go find her own prescription, do it in her name to sustain his desire to take pills. And he had her take it as well. Um, he was deeply involved in Cassie's personal life with his personal staff, attending to Cassie's day to day travel, other needs, including medical care. On multiple occasions, Diddy had Cassie's personal medical records sent to him directly. For instance, she was experiencing memory loss either from excessive drug use or from the beatings that he did to her. All that shit was sent to Diddy. 
throughout the relationship multiple times each year. Diddy would violently beat Cassie, leaving bruises on her body. After every instance in which he beat Cassie, Diddy uses money and power to orchestrate extensive efforts to hide the evidence of his abuse, including by hiding Cassie in hotels for days at a time until her bruises would heal. In one instance, at an after party with Jay-Z, Diddy beat Cassie repeatedly in an Escalade, including by kicking her and hitting her. He forced her out the vehicle on Fifth Ave. She was eventually able to hail a cab and get to an apartment in Manhattan where she cried in fear, realizing that there was no one she could tell. At another part, Diddy saw Cassie speaking to a music manager, got pissed off. She had hoped speaking to the manager would allow her to further grow her career, and Diddy would be happy for her, but instead he became angry, pulled her out the club, took her to the car, Beat her, pushing her in the corner of the vehicle, stomping on her face. Uh, Diddy's security staff tried to stop beating him, but was unsuccessful. Uh, <laughs> when the car arrived at Diddy's residence, Cassie attempted to run away, but Diddy followed her and proceeded to kick her in the face. Uh, Cassie was bleeding profusely and was ushered into Diddy's home, where, where she began to throw up from the violent assault. Upon recognizing the damage he had done, Diddy panicked and forced his staff to bring Cassie to his hotel suite where she was required to stay for a week. During that stay, as her injuries healed, Cassie began to realize Diddy, Diddy's tremendous loyal network not only knew about and witnessed his assault, but also that these witnesses were not willing to do anything meaningful to stop Diddy's behavior. <laughs> she sounded like R. Kelly all over again, bro. Uh, she recognized she was powerless and that reporting Diddy to the authorities would not alter Diddy's status or influence, but would merely give Diddy another excuse to hurt her. Diddy forces Cassie into sexual trafficking. While in New York City, Diddy told Cassie that he wanted to engage in a fantasy he called voyeurism. Diddy told her that it would turn him on if he saw her with another dick. First time, Diddy hired a man and brought him to the house in L.A. The man, Mr. Combs, and Cassie wore a mask and ingested drugs. Diddy directed Cassie to perform sexual acts with the man while Diddy watched and masturbated and recorded him. The entire encounter lasted multiple days. Diddy began to call these arrangements freak offs or FOs. He would repeatedly tell Cassie at random moments that he wanted an FO and Cassie was expected to facilitate the location and hire the male sex workers herself. At certain points during their relationship, he would insist on a weekly FO. Diddy would repeatedly tell Cassie that this was practice for our thing and our secret. FOs would often take place in hotel suites, and they got a bunch of damn hotels listed of where they did this shit. Cassie was eventually instructed to use websites and escort services to find male sex workers to participate in the FOs. Diddy told Cassie to search for large black penises on the website. It's fucking gay ass, bro. Cuck ass, dog. Diddy's assistants would help set up the FOs by setting up the hotel suites, and leaving baby oil and Astroglide. Diddy also supplied Cassie with copious amounts of drugs before and during the FOs. Cassie was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FOs, which allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after the FO to recover from the excessive amounts of drugs he pumped into her ass. Um, Cassie was required to dress up in lingerie for an FO, and Diddy insisted that she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of the black men he hired to have sex with her. During the FO, Combs would instruct Cassie to pour excessive amounts of oil all over herself. Diddy would then instruct Cassie and the sex workers to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Cassie where to touch the sex workers. Diddy would say things like, grab that big black. I ain't saying it, bro. Y'all not about to take anything I'm saying out of goddamn context. You're, you're free to read this shit yourself, bro. But Diddy would say things like, grab that big black and ask her how does it feel as he directed her to perform for him. During the FOs, in addition to directing Cassie and masturbating, Diddy would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Cassie having sex with the higher sex workers. He treated the forced encounter as a personal art project, adjusting candles he used for lighting to frame the videos he took. While Cassie quickly deleted any photographs of video sex acts if they were taken from her phone, Diddy repeatedly made it clear that he retained many videos of her during these sessions. 
even when she deleted the videos, Diddy would tell her that he was able to recover the deleted videos from her devices. On one occasion, he sat next to her on the flight and made her watch the video she thought she had deleted, reinforcing her inability to escape the immense power he held over her. During some FOs, Diddy would become extremely intoxicated and would hit Cassie during them. Uh, Cassie was repulsed by Diddy's demands, but between the physical beating and recognizing his incredible power and incredible temper, Cassie became petrified of the partner and boss and felt she could not say no. She knew firsthand that telling Diddy that if she didn't want to do it, it's going to be met with violence and anger. In addition, any suggestion that Cassie would refuse the FO or otherwise report Combs' abuse was met with ultimatums. Diddy would say that Cassie could not go to the police because she had a lot to lose. 2015, for example, in the middle of a surprise birthday dinner for Cassie, Diddy insisted that they leave and go to a FO at a hotel. When she expressed she didn't want to go, Diddy had Cassie cornered by security and forced her to leave with him. After this FO, after this FO, Diddy and Cassie went back to the hotel room that Cassie was staying at, where some of Cassie's friends were hanging out. Diddy was severely intoxicated and at one point during the night picked up one of Cassie's friends like a child and dangled the friend over the balcony of a 17th floor hotel suite. Cassie and her friends were scared by Diddy's erratic behavior, but Cassie was heavily sedated because of the drugs she took to participate in the FO and therefore was unable to respond to Diddy's terrifying behavior. Like, what the fuck are you going to do even if you could? Even if you was able, even if you were sober, what the fuck are you going to do? He going to do whatever the fuck you want. Um, says, Anytime she wanted to create distance between her and Diddy, he used his power networks to get her back. Um, 2011, they had a rough patch. Diddy had a, uh, Cassie had a brief relationship with Kid Cudi. Diddy returned from a trip, demanded that Cassie do an FO with him. She did. During that FO, he went through her phone and saw messages between her and Cudi. Went crazy. Um, says Combs became enraged and proceeded to place a manual corkscrew between his fingers and lunged at Cassie. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming that's like an assault. Cassie ran away to stay at Kid Cudi's home to escape. Soon thereafter, one of Diddy's staff members told Cassie that he needed to talk to her, even though Diddy was enraged, feeling like she could not escape Diddy and his network of enforcers. Or Cassie returned to Diddy. He hit her several times and then kicked her in the back as she tried to run out the door. She went home to Connecticut, where her mother took pictures of the bruises Mr. Combs had left on her. And in February 2012, during Paris Fashion Week, Combs told Cassie that he was going to blow up Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. <laughs> Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. So lots of abuse, some much more abuse documented in the complaint. 2017-2018, Cassie became desperate to leave Diddy and his abuse. She recognized that if she stayed with him, she would never ever be able to have a successful career or ever be physically and mentally safe. She therefore became determined to completely break away from Diddy and his cycle of abuse and made concerted efforts to avoid him. In 2018, she joined Diddy for a dinner at an Italian restaurant in Malibu, California, where she believed she would have a discussion about concluding their relationship for good. After dinner, Diddy and Cassie returned to Cassie's home, which was paid for by Diddy. Diddy forced himself into her apartment and tried to kiss Cassie. She told him to stop and attempted to push him away. Did he forcibly pulled off Cassie's clothing, unbuckled his belt, and proceeded to assault Cassie while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Soon thereafter, Cassie took steps to completely separate herself from the longtime abuser, including by leaving the home that he paid for and returning the car he purchased her. Despite moving away, Cassie's address was posted online in 2019, leading to fears for her safety. Cassie was under immense duress during the months after Diddy graped her, took all steps possible to entirely remove herself from the abuser's ambit, including entering into contracts to end her record deal with Bad Boy Entertainment. But moral story is that Diddy did that shit. He did all of it, bro. And of course, he ain't got no shame about it, man. He's, he's full, he feel like he's untouchable, bro. He's been untouchable this goddamn long. He ain't done much more crazy shit than this, I'm sure. Man, that's all I got to say. We have decided to resolve this matter amicably i wish cassie and her family all love or i wish cassie and her family all the best love bruh <laughs> just paid her some hush money bro that's it that's it bro like like i said, like I said at the beginning bro that motherfucker need to be in jail lock the hell up bro predatory than a motherfucker bro it's r kelly 2.0 you know what i'm saying got her when she was 19 a little child back then and they don't tell them what else is much more could been doing bro all these motherfuckers are demons bro
demons, dog. But he did that shit.